Welcome in One Nation to the first episode of the year for the Hive Podcast, hosted by TJ Wingard. Joined today by sophomore men's soccer player, Brennan Lagana. Brennan, thank you for taking the time to join me. Thanks, TJ. How are you doing today? I am living the dream. Uh, ready to talk some soccer with you. Well, let's go ahead and start about talking about last Friday. Big win to open the year against Covenant. One, you're playing at home. That's always fun. And, you know, I, I, let's actually talk about that. Fans in, this, in attendance, playing at a real home game. How did that feel? It was, it was actually amazing. It was one of the reasons why I wanted to come to Lynchburg so bad. The atmosphere we have at home is second to none, and it was shown on Friday, not even to its fullest extent. So it was great. And walking through that game, so it's, it's pretty evenly battled. Maybe you all played the better side of it in the first 10 minutes, then it gets to an equilibrium state. And then Joey Daly... Scores right before the half, and you can kind of feel the energy come up. And then the second half, in a six-minute stretch, y'all net three more scores. I got to know, the last few minutes of the first half, halftime itself, what started to work for y'all, what changed, what clicked? Well, full props to Joey. Joey does crazy stuff like that all the time, gets an amazing goal out of it, sort of hypes us up going into half. We get in there, talk as a team, think about what we did in the first half, what we did good, what we did bad, what we wanted to change. Coaches come in, we reiterate that to them, they give us their piece, and we go back out fired up, ready to go, and stuck to our game plan, did everything right, and got more pieces out of it. Yeah, and then the last two goals of the second half, both scored by you, <laughs> done so in a little bit different fashion. So you have the first one that comes from Luke Mega, who, by the way, nine goals last year, you could just see. Covenant is keying in on him, thinking Mega's going to finish this play, and then a dot of a pass to you in front of the net that one seemed easy enough for the finish but that second one you go one-on-one good dribbling skills and then able to convert what's going through your mind while that's all that's happening well first off props to luke luke does everything sure. he's supposed to do offensively and defensively and i just had to make sure i got to the spot i knew he was going to play the ball i got there i knew someone was on the back post waiting in case it wasn't for me and it came to me and i finished it and then the second goal, I made the right run. Monzi found me the pass, and I saw the keeper charging at me. I knew there was someone on my right shoulder and decided just to take the keeper on, go left, and he fell, and the goal was pretty much wide open for me. So that was it was, an, it was a surreal goal. Fantastic play on Friday, 4-1 final there. Also a 4-1 final two days later. Neutral side playing that game at CNU, beat Greensboro. Felt like more of the same for y'all. It was. Um... Nonetheless, we went in with the same mindset. We can't go in thinking anything's going to be easy. We want to work for everything we get. Um, you end up getting another good result. Um, and we go from there. We play CNU Friday mm -hmm. after playing at CNU against Greensboro. So now CNU will be coming to us, and we're pumped for it as well. So Yeah, we'll talk about that CNU game here in a little bit. But So you go on Sunday's game, four different goals from four different players. You have an assist in that contest. So... For those who are smart, keep in track. That's eight goals on the year with seven different goal scorers. Have you ever played on a team like this where it feels like anybody's a threat to score at any time? Um, personally, I don't feel like that. I have before. We've always had certain players that are you're very keen. They have a very keen sure. nose for goal, and you have some that score more than others. But right now, in the first two games, things are really diverse throughout the team, which is great because you like to see an offense that can score from multiple angles, multiple different people. So right now, everything's great. And I think it also speaks to this team's depth. I mean, a ton of options outside of the starting 11, which going more macro here, I think this season's really compelling across college sports because the amount of fifth years that are coming back and playing. You're a sophomore, so you're on the younger end of everything that's gone on. But speaking to that, what is it like having – all these players, like Kyle Gallagher's back between the posts. What does that mean for you and this team? Kyle specifically having our keeper back in net. Um, for me, I was already playing. When I played last year with Kyle, I've played with him before. I loved sure. having him in goal. Same thing to be said about Nick Foley, our center back. Captain center back this year, again, love playing on the field with both of them. They're great additions, and they took advantage of being able to have that fifth year to play with us again, and that's – the gratefulness is there, and it shows their drive and love for the game. So it's great. And it gives you all a ton of experience. And then coming from your side of it, freshman year last year, obviously it's a weird season because of COVID and everything, but what were some of the things that you wanted to improve upon from freshman year to sophomore year? 
So, um, last year I had a I had a I had a decent freshman season with all things considered. Sure. Came in this year with just the mentality that I have something to prove and I want to be able to do the best I can for the team and for myself. And so far, I feel as though I'm on the right track to be able to continue to do that. And I'm sure everybody else on the team has the same mindset. We what's going to be considered a normal season this year, hopefully. Um, everybody should be able to do what they want to do throughout the year. And I want to ask you, coming into a program where the bar is as high as it gets, right? I mean, you're the reigning ODAC champs from last year. This is a program that has been continuously towards the top of the pack inside the ODAC. What does that play in your mind when you're thinking about schools? Lynchburg, your choice, obviously. What kind of a factor to play there recruiting, but also even now, like you're playing with those expectations now on your shoulders? Obviously, coming in as a recruit, it played a very crucial role. I, I wanted to come somewhere that had an already good program, somewhere that wanted to continue building an even better program, and Lynchburg was all of the above there. Came into an already amazing program, didn't come in as a starter, had a bunch of amazing seniors. A few of them stayed with us, obviously, this year, and now as the reigning ODAC champs, um, teams look at us that way now. Sure. So, they look at it the same way that I looked at it when I was coming here. It's These are the defending champs. They mean business. They want to win, and they're going to do what they can to do it. And I feel as we keep that mindset, good things will keep coming. And while Friday night's game against CNU, not a conference game, I'm new here. And everyone has let me know how big of a deal this game is going to be, which is just saying something because we're, you know, I'm getting told this about a week out, mm-hmm. and, you know, this is just men's soccer. I mean, this is, you know, a normal fall sport to me this game's getting talked about like it's football like it's Michigan Ohio State in a lot of ways what are your expectations what are you trying to do day by day to prep for Friday uh we're taking care of our bodies in the best way we can um we obviously had a little bit of an off day today coming off a game yesterday with a great performance um we didn't play CNU last year during our shortened season so I haven't been able to experience the atmosphere for myself yet but I know that the home being at home the attendance is going to be crazy. Our energy is going to be through the roof. We're going to come out with an incredible mindset like we always do. The coaches will have a great game plan, and we're just going to play our hearts out and hope for the best. Well, I'm looking forward to watching you all play that. Going on a different point here, head coach Chris Yeager, i got to know what it's like. In the mind of a player, how would you describe Coach Yeager? Coach Yeager is one of the best coaches I've ever had, and I've played for a lot of different teams. Yeager is a good combination of everything you want to have in a coach as far as being able to be serious, being personable with his players, knowing the game is obviously very important, and knowing how to play his players against certain teams. And Jaeger has a different plan for pretty much every game because they do their homework on other teams just like we do our homework on ourselves and other players and whatnot. And Jaeger, Hinkle, and Pacunas, all three of them, they all do their part to make sure that we can go out with the best possible plan possible. And it's it it succeeds. No doubt about that. I'm going to hit you with some rapid-fire superlatives of sorts here. Funniest guy on the team. Ooh, funniest guy. Other than team. yourself, of course. <laughs> of can't, course. You can't back yourself in the back too hard. Uh, I got to say it might be Kenny just because he doesn't talk that much. So it's, it's a little funny. But um, other than that... Could definitely be Luke Mega, actually. Luke always has a joke to crack or something to say. Never never doesn't make somebody smile, whether it's on the field or off the field, on the bus. Luke will make someone laugh. Luke and Kenny, the attackers, coming through with some jokes. Doing it in different ways, too. That's interesting. Most likely, guy on the team, become president one day. Become president? Become wow. president. Carter Averett, without a doubt. That center, that center mid, yeah, without 100%. A doubt. Carter Averitt. Gets oh, it yeah. done behind the scenes. I could see the headlines mm-hmm. writing themselves, and let's see. Griffin Phillips also has a very good shot there, too. But Carter and Griffin are two very good, two good options there. For sure. Last but not least, who would you least want to date a family member? Who would I least want to date a family member? Oh, Cousin no. and sister, I don't know what your family dynamic's like, but who would you on the team, at least want them to have that sort of interaction with? Probably my roommate, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Definitely my roommate, Josh. I've known him way too long. He's got too much on you. Yeah, Make he knows that. too much. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Brennan. Any final thoughts for the show? 
I'm excited for Friday. We'll see you out there. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you for taking the time for joining us. Of course. And thank you all for tuning in to the Hive Podcast. This has been Brennan Lagana, TJ Winger. Until next time, we're signing off.